Hello, welcome to Soul Print Intuitive Tarot. My name is Cindy and I am delighted to um, welcome you to my channels. Um, viewers, new subscribers, I'm, I'm honored. So, I have a question. Today is June 20th and Canadian Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau is meeting with the United States President Donald Trump. I'm kind of curious to know how that's going. So I thought I would do a, a little bit of a card read and see if we could get a little bit of insight um, as to how those communications are going. And then we may just actually take a quick little trip around the world and check out um, some of the United States' other allies and see how they're feeling about Trump, how they're trying to cope with him. Um, let's find out. Okay, down you come. All right, so just a couple more quick, quick shuffles. And we're focusing in on Trudeau and Trump. Trudeau and Trump, Trudeau and Trump, Trudeau and Trump. Okay. So just sort of as an overview, it sort of appears as if Canada has sort of um, taken a bit more of a wait and see approach. Um, Canadians very, very much consider the United States, you know, our brother. Um, it's a very, very close relationship between the two countries. It is, you know, meshed together in, in different um, areas, you know, um, car manufacturing, all that kind of. So there's a lot of cross-border and interaction going on between the two. And honestly, you know, Trump has sort of thrown, and I venture to say this will apply for all of the allied countries, um, Trump has just... He's caused everybody to just put the brakes on everything, just sort of slow down um, things that, you know, maybe would have moved ahead very quickly. There's just, everybody's just breaking a little bit because uh, Trump is just so incredibly er erratic. And, you know, everybody's kind of figured out that on the one hand, you can't let him bully you. But on the other hand, you can't um, not be strong because both send messages to him that create a very, very strong impression or attitude in his mind. And so it's very important to find that balance when dealing with this man simply because he is just incredibly erratic. Um, the whole threat of tariffs thing, that whole nonsense about, you know, well, if somebody doesn't do what I want, I'm just going to slap tariffs on them. First of all, could some, anybody, anybody up to the task, could they possibly explain to Trudeau how tariffs work? Okay. And I know the answer is no, because many have tried, but it aggravates other countries. It annoys them because First of all, he interprets it or misinterprets, he it just completely and incorrectly understand how, how that works. Um, but more than that, you know, other sovereign countries, they kind of don't feel that it is acceptable or necessary for Trump to have an opinion about what they should do and how they should do it and how they should run their countries and who they're you know, um, provincial leaders should be and who their mayors should be. 
he sticks his nose where it doesn't belong and he antagonizes, antagonizes and annoys people. So what has happened and, um, is that everything has just been slowed down and as a result, things that could have moved ahead very quickly and very efficiently have just been slow walked. The forward motion is very, very slow because you just have to be you know, really, really careful with how you interact with, with um, this man because he is so erratic. And they are well aware of the fact that he lies about everything. They're well aware of the fact that this man cannot keep a secret. When he feels cornered or boxed in or even something as simple as when Trump feels, you know, sort of almost like not enough attention has been paying to him. He will say whatever comes out of his mouth. He doesn't care if it's a national security issue. He doesn't care if it makes no logical sense to anybody with a pair of ears. It, it just, he'll just say and do whatever it takes. And so that sort of erratic behavior has, you know, created a situation where most countries are simply looking at him and saying, we can't trust him. It is not the United States that we have an issue with. It is the president of the United States. But because he is so ignorant and ill-informed, we can't trust cross-border relations the way we used to. You know, we're hesitant to share our intelligence with um, the United States because... We can't trust that if Trump finds out about it or knows about it, he will be able to keep his mouth shut. Uh, it, it's sort of really not in his DNA. It's not in his makeup. And I have to tell you, you know, politicians around the world are really concerned about his so-called new allies. You know, the Putins of the world, the Kim Jong-uns of the world, the Xi's of the world. You know, we get that this is not in the United States' best interest. We understand that he is an incredibly difficult person and personality to harness and control. But that does not mean that we can just say, oh, well, the guy's a goof and we're just going to ignore him. You can't ignore him. You have to, as another country, you have to sort of... Um, hmm appear to be playing at least part of the game with really not playing any of the game behind the scenes um, because you, you you simply can't trust him it, there is clear understanding that you know he'll flatter you with good news you know because not only does flattery work on him but he foolishly thinks because it works on him it works on everybody else well let me tell you the the trudeaus and the merkels and you know um, the Marcons of the world and, and, you know, all the rest of them, they're politicians, they're leaders. They don't get swayed by phony baloney compliments. They don't. N nor are they impressed by apparent attempts at bullying. They understand that while he flatters them on one hand, he will absolutely stab them in the back on another hand. He really almost views himself as that really, um, you know, strong and dominant sort of male figure who is just going to keep everybody in line. And it's not working and he gets frustrated and then he lashes out and then he spills secrets and then he, you know, says things like I'm in love with Kim Jong-un and people get like a little wigged out. So if I'm going to see if we can sort of focus in here. I'm just going to cut the deck again because this is a really good overview of um, kind of how all allies are feeling. Maybe we'll just actually reshuffle them. Um, how all allies are sort of feeling and coping with him and I'm going to, um, I think the way I'm going to do it is I'm gonna lay out, I'm gonna shuffle them and then lay out probably three cards and we'll check in on um, some countries around the world and see how they're actually feeling with, feeling about and dealing with Donald Trump and his administration. Because a part of it you have to understand is not only that Trump is erratic and you can't trust him. And, you know, he, um, 
he, he's just not knowledgeable. He's not wise. He talks about things that he doesn't understand. Um, and, and so the point is that just as a general rule, countries are really kind of done with it. So I think I digress somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, reshuffle the deck a little bit, and then I'm going to put out two or three cards for a few countries that are supposed to be allies and see if we can drill down a little bit on actually how relations are and um, how other countries feel. So Trump and allies, Trump and allies, Trump and allies. Interesting, at the bottom of the deck, you have, you know, a card that very often represents sort of being left out in the cold, um, being pushed aside, being shunned. Got to say, that doesn't sound particularly not accurate. It's also sad. So, let's take a look at Canada and the U.S. It's a lot of work dealing with him. He is so emotional. <laughs> he has so many secrets he is erratic he doesn't speak intelligently Canadians and the Canadian Prime Minister feel that they need to be very cautious with him but really not give him much of an inch because he is that person if, if you give him an inch he's going to take 400 country miles he just um, everything has to be overblown and overdone uh, you know, the tariffs, you know, it starts at five, goes to 10, goes to 15, goes to 25. Everything has to be a production with him. And for Canadians, there's a sense of sadness that he is the way he is and that he's done to your country what he has done to your country. But we are um, cautious of him. We feel we need to push back on some of his ideas and attitudes we're aware that we're dealing with an emotional keg we know he not only has secrets but can't keep secrets and most importantly there is um, a, an increasing amount of concern about the kind of friendships that um, Trump is creating with some countries that typically you would not be buddy buddy with and part of it honestly is um, Trump is getting into bed with the wrong kinds of people and countries that are you know bordering the United States like Canada and Mexico um, are really concerned because if something crazy starts to happen and anything happens that, that constitutes an attack on the United States both countries are significantly and seriously impacted and the attitude the sort of the prevailing attitude is this should not have happened this could have been avoided this is not how um, good politicians and good policies work so um, I guess we'll wish Trudeau luck and success and we'll hope that Trump doesn't find anything to sort of become irrational about. So, quick shuffle, and I want to move to. Um, I, I, I want to. Be, I want to do England or, or Britain because I and I'm actually you know May is leaving, um, and I know that you know he thought the whole Brexit thing was brilliant and fine. Uh, but really, what I what I want to snoop in on here is his visit with Queen Elizabeth. Um, I want to see what she thought of him and how that visit went uh, behind the scenes. Trump and Queen Elizabeth, Trump and Queen Elizabeth, Trump and Queen Elizabeth. Let's see. Oh, lovely. The Queen, you know, she has such tolerance. Um, she's so Daddy. And she's been she's been in the game a really long time and she surely does know how to um, stay very neutral. Stay very, very neutral. That's what she does. So a couple of things. 
on the one hand, Queen Elizabeth is really aware that, you know, her time is running down and it's important to her, as it has been her entire life, to sort of not step into politics, not get her opinions and her attitudes out there. And she's very, very aware that there are things going on in, um, in France with the whole oil tax, the carbon tax, whatever they call it there, um, in, in Britain with the Brexit thing. Um, in Mexico with the tariffs. She's she's really aware that there's sort of, you know, and then just Trump in America. Uh, but she's very aware that she needs to sort of stay out of that. So <laughs> this is a really interesting thing. Okay, I got a really clear flash. Um, so Trump, yak, 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 yak. And the queen, mm-hmm. Yak, 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 yak. And the queen, mm-hmm. Well, every mm-hmm, which anybody on the planet would interpret as, oh, I'm just going to let you talk. Trump interprets as, she agrees with me. We're, we're simpatico, we're, we're buds. We're totally on the same page. <laughs> so he walked away from the, the, the um, trip to London um, feeling like it had to have been. It simply had to have been the very best vis visit the queen had. Now, what that tells me sort of from behind the scenes is that um, the Wheel of Fortune and, you know, this is my card for Trump, the, the King of Cups. Um, and so everybody, you know, England is basically waiting for the America to have a change of fortune. And in this way, the hope is that the change is positive and um, life affirming and globally um, embracing and encompassing when this new change comes. I mean, the world is literally waiting for the United States to get rid of this man, whether it is by impeachment whether someone forces him to quit or whether he is voted out. Everybody is just waiting for, um, you know, calm. All right. Um, Trump in Mexico. Trump in Mexico. Trump in Mexico. God, you know, he, he just loves charging in where they're, uh, you know, where true fools would tend to t tend not to go. You know, Mexico is a country that its population, its people put a lot of faith and trust in their politicians. They may not always like them, they all whatever, but they expect their leaders to rule sort of like a king, but I don't mean that in a non-democratic um, way. I just mean they want somebody in office who has authority and is respected. And so Mexico is in a position where they have to be very, very careful because the... Um, I think it's a president of Mexico, and I apologize. I do not know his name. I can't remember it. Um, he has to put on a really good face for his people. He has to be appearing strong and um, in charge and, you know, only bending when bending is necessary, but beyond that, to be very strong and, and careful about what he says or does or relinquishes. And Trump just, you know, God bless, he just charges and charges ahead and he doesn't care. And then he jumps off the cliff and then he doesn't, you know, and then Mexico feels, however, that the United States is really, really taking advantage of them. Um, and this pertains, I think, the, the tariff situation is, is ridiculous. Um, it's as if Trump does not seem to understand that there are really big parts of the United States. I'm thinking of, you know, California, for example, who really needs those um, immigrant workers to come in and help them get their fields or their crops um, taken care of and stuff. So 
it's like he doesn't understand. And because he doesn't understand, Mexico, like they, they get that he doesn't understand. They, they completely understand that he doesn't understand. But they think because of that, or they feel because of that, that he is, is literally stealing from them. He's taking advantage of them. He's forcing issues that aren't based in any actual reality. Um, and he's, he's just simply making that what it, it, you know, what he thinks it's going to be and should be the way he just wants it the way he wants it. Um, Mexico is going to continue to play a very sort of, you can only push us so far and then we're going to push back. And if we have to be flattering to you, and if we have to appear to be, um, bowing down to your wishes, we recognize as a country that it's only, you know, really a few more months, whether it is, you know, September or December or, or November of 2020, whenever it is, it's not that far away. So, you know, countries are trying to figure out or wanting to figure, uh, they're just sort of saying, sorry, I'm kind of all over the map here. They're just sort of saying we can wait him out. That's the bottom line. We're going to wait him out. And we're not, we're not going to give him anything we can't give him. And some stuff we're giving him, we sort of get that, um, that, um, it will, it will change. It will go kind of back to at least some degree of normalcy. Okay. So, um, let's do Trump in France, Trump in France, Trump in France. Marcon tried his best. He really did. He did everything that he could do, the big parade, the flattery, the, you know, we're buddy buddies, we're best friends. And when it suited Trump, Trump just said, screw you and walked away. You know, you didn't agree to every single thing I thought. So, so Marcon again is another one who is moving very, very slowly. Um, they're not really pushing a lot of visits with Trump, a lot of uh, relationships. They, they're kind of taking a little bit of a step back and, um, and they're hoping that time will remove this situation. Um, I am a wee little bit concerned about this death card because, you know, Okay, no, I'm not. What this is showing is that the relationship that was between France and America, which was long, it was friendly, um, again, they were considered a brother, um, has changed. Is that change irreparable? Probably not. But it definitely has been shaken up. It has definitely been... Um, rocked, you know, unbalanced. Let's try um, New Zealand. Trump in New Zealand. Trump in New Zealand. Trump in New Zealand. This one should be interesting because as far as I know, and God knows I'm not really up on all this world politics stuff, but I don't know. It seems to me that um, Trump kind of keeps his distance and, and I don't remember any real clear examples, at least certainly recently, of where he um, has really, really, you know, unsettled or tipped over the milk. It, it, you know, again, um, <laughs> Australia, or sorry, New Zealanders have um, actually a fair bit of faith in the country of the United States to get this sorted out, to correct the government issues, to take that which has become a burden to global citizens and by extension to the country of New Zealand, um, he, they are trusting that Trump is going to just be taken care of. You know, you're, he's going to get voted out. He's going to get impeached. Again, there seems to be sort of a, a continual theme here is that countries appear to be taking the attitude of one, we can wait him out. Two, 
the rest of us are going to keep our alliances strong and healthy and, and sort of on the same page. And um, three, we're very hopeful that when things start getting corrected, that relationships can go back to the way they were. Although I, I do warn you that um, most countries, it's, it's sort of not gonna be like the prodigal son comes home, okay? It's going to be more like, okay, we're going to give you another chance. We're going to see what your new administration, your new president, how, how they try to correct what has been done. You know, we're sort of, um, <laughs> okay, so it's like this. Your allied countries have put out the welcome mat, but they haven't swung the door wide open, okay? So everybody is going to be watching. Um, and I, I also wanted to hit on um, Germany and Australia. And it, this has kind of gone on long enough, and it feels very much like the message is really the same. Your allies are nervous, they're upset, they think he's nuts, they don't like dealing with him, he's an emotional fire keg, they're keeping things held closer to their chest because they don't trust him, and they seem to all have a sort of wait and see attitude, try not to rock his boat so he doesn't do anything incredibly stupid, um, but also don't back down and don't give in to him because that is exactly what he's looking for, exactly what he wants, so he can start insulting and calling you weak and, and you know, walking around pounding his chest. So, sorry this went on so long. I don't typically want my, my videos to be this long, but I thank you very, very much for um, liking and subscribing and viewing my vid videos. It's um, it's wonderful. I, I The comments are brilliant. Um, I don't think that there's been one time that I haven't gone into the comment section and read something that just caused me to break out laughing. Um, so you guys are really clever and, and I really enjoy that. So thank you very, very much for finding me at Soul Print Intuitive Tarot. Be well, take care. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.